This video presents a stack implementation whose underlying implementation is a chain of linked nodes. Later in the video, Java code will be provided, but the basic principles behind this implementation apply to other languages as well, as long as they support either reference types or pointers. A linked stack is made up of several nodes. A node is a simple data structure consisting of two variables, data and a reference to a next node. Now, this is drawn in simple form here, where we simply assume the first box is the data and the second box is the link to the following node. Note that sometimes that next link will be null, in which case we put a slash through that box. The stack always maintains a reference to its top node. Now, if the stack is empty, then this one variable will simply have a slash through it because it will be a null reference. If we are then to push a value onto it, we will create a new node and put that value into the data portion and have the null reference be the next link of that newly created node. However, in general, when we push something on, what we're actually doing is inserting it between the previous links and this top node reference. So if I push a value of five onto the stack, I'm creating a new node that contains a five, and I'm making the next link of that new node be whatever the current top is. I then reassign the top to be the new node. If I keep pushing items onto this stack, then the drawing gets a little messy, but you can see how we keep inserting a new node on top of the stack by making that new node po point at whatever used to be on top and reassigning the top pointer to be the new node. We can also tidy up the drawing by rearranging things like this. Now the details of how we access data are slightly different in different languages, but in Java, the way we would access that six would be through the top node, like so. We would say top node dot data. So if I had this line in my code, I would be returning a value of six, or if I was assigning to it, I'd be modifying a value of six. And if I wanted to access that next link, I would say, top node dot next. And to further drive this point forward, if I say top node dot next dot data, that would be the five. Taking all this into consideration, if I want to define a peak operation, the value that should be returned by this is six because six is the value on top of the stack. So in the case of how I define peak, all I'm gonna do is return top node dot data because top node will always point to the node on top of the stack and the data in that node will always be what I want to return. Now, if I want to pop a value from the stack, the pop operation would also return a value of six but it has to do more than that. It has to modify the stack structure to remove that top node. Essentially, what I want to do is make this arrow point here so that the node containing five is now on top. But how do I get from this representation to the next step? Well, I can take top node and change what its value is. I can set it equal to top node dot next. Now in terms of evaluation order, if I have something on the right side of an assignment statement or an assignment operator like equals, this whole expression will be evaluated before the assignment happens. So ignoring the fact that I'm assigning a variable there and just looking at how we define top node dot next, 
Well, just earlier in the same video, I indicated that top node.next is this node here. It's where that arrow is pointing. And if I set top node equal to top node.next, I'm basically saying that I want the arrow inside of top node, this here, to point to the exact same place where the arrow inside of top node.next points. So this box here is top node.next. It currently points here. And so this assignment operation is telling me to make that arrow point here. Now, in a language like Java, this remaining node, which used to be on top, will eventually be reclaimed by garbage collection. In some other languages, you have to explicitly deallocate that memory to make this node go away. Either way, we're left with a reference to the node that contains five in it, because that is now the new top node. If I were to pop again, that would return a value of five, and I would change this arrow to point here, and this node would either be explicitly deallocated or, in Java, eventually reclaimed by garbage collection. And now we will discuss the Java implementation of this concept. So notice first that we have a private inner class named node. So this is a class, but it is only visible inside of the link stack. Notice that we have a link stack which has elements of type T. The two member variables of the node are data and next. So data can be some arbitrary type and next is another node. We have a constructor that will assign values to these two member variables. And if you wanted to, you could also define getters and setters. But since this is a private class, it's fairly easy and straightforward to simply access the elements directly. The only member variable contained in the class itself is top node. So data and next are member variables, but they are member variables of the node class of which there will be several instances in a single stack. But for a single given stack, the only member variable is this single top node. When we construct a new stack, we set the top node to null, indicating that the stack is empty. And then we have the basic operations of the stack. So push creates a new node and the new entry is the value that we're pushing on top of the stack. And notice that the entry in the node constructor corresponding to the next node has the current top node assigned to it. This is what makes the new top node point at what the previous top node was. So this top node value is evaluated, we point at it, we assign this to a temp node, but then we immediately assign that to the top node. In fact, we could simply do this in one step like this because of the evaluation order. Um, so what we see here is that top node will be evaluated when this node is constructed but then it will be reassigned to this new value here. And so this works identically to what we had before. It just has one less temporary variable in it. Now pop is the method that removes the top of the stack and peak simply looks at that top element. So peak is the simpler approach. Both of them check if the stack is empty. So if the stack is empty, then we throw an empty stack exception, just as we did with the array stack. In the case of peak, all we're doing is returning the value of top node.data. In the case of pop, we have to first save that result in a temporary variable result before then modifying the stack and then returning our saved result. So this step here evaluates what top node.next is. So this will not be the top node, but it will be the next node down in the stack. So this expression evaluates to the node that is under the top node. 
And by assigning that to top node, we effectively skip over the previous top, which is eventually reclaimed by garbage collection. And then we have two convenience methods. One checks if the stack is empty. We can tell by checking if the top node is null. And then to actually clear the stack, we simply set the top node to null. Now, once again, all of those remaining nodes still exist in memory. In fact, even the top node is still in memory, but we've just deleted the reference to it. Eventually, those nodes will be reclaimed by garbage collection. So if you were working in a language that did not support garbage collection, you would have to explicitly deallocate those nodes. But overall, this is a fairly simple stack implementation that doesn't take many lines of code to write.